Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, today, I thought we'd uh, look a bit at uh, how linked data sets work in HSDS. Because um, this week, I had someone ask me about it, and I was explaining to it, and then I realized it's a little more, more complicated um, than I was uh, realizing at first. Anyway, um, I'm here. Um, I have a... a Python notebook session. And this is actually running on AWS. So let's just walk through this and uh, we'll, we'll show some examples. Um, and this is, by the way, is using some data from the National Renewable Energy Lab, which has a fair amount of data. I think it's on the order of a petabyte of HDF5 and HSTS data that's freely available uh, to access. So um, without further ado, let's run this. Oh, whoops, okay. I don't know why I just did. And actually, let me add a line here. Let's do an HS info. So in, uh, if you're not familiar, in uh, Python notebooks, if you use the exclamation mark, that's like a pass through to run a command line. So I can do pound uh, exclamation mark H info, and we will see something like server name NASA Cloud. That's our server we set up on, on HSTS on AWS. Uh, this is the endpoint, this is the local endpoint, uh, my username. And uh, node count, so we're running uh, with eight nodes, and it's been up for seven hours. Right. So next, I'm going to run AS LS with some options. The dash H says make the results in human readable form. Uh, dash V is verbose. Dash dash bucket says use the following S3 bucket, nrel dash PDS dash HSDS versus the default bucket that was uh, set up for our local HSDS. And finally, slash NREL slash NSRDB. Uh, NSRDB stands for National Solar Radiation Database. And slash CONUS is a folder uh, for data related to the continental United States. Anyway, so we run that. And we see. We get some stuff. Uh, the owner is called NREL admin. Uh, the size is 12.1 terabytes. So this is where the dash H comes in. Without dash H, it would just be the digital uh, number of bytes. Uh, it's a domain, and uh, these are the HSDS domain names in this folder. Okay, so we have five HSDS domains each with a size of a little more than 12 terabytes. So quite large as HDF5 files go. And the total is uh, 60 terabytes in this folder. And, and by the way, anyone, uh, please uh, stop me if you have questions along the way. So let's dive in and look at a particular domain. So we'll do the same HSLS dash dash bucket, but now with slash NREL NSRDB CONUS slash NSRDB underscore CONUS underscore 2020.h5. Okay. And just like with H5LS, we see there's a bunch of uh, data sets and there are um, all quite large uh, mainly two-dimensional with like this alpha data set has um, 105 uh, some thousand uh, rows and almost 3 million columns. Okay. And we won't dive into what these data sets actually represent. There's lots of material on the NREL website. Um, if you're interested. Okay, 
so next, um, this is actually a preview feature. Uh, it's not uh, for H5PiD. That's not out yet, um, but it's coming soon, which is you have a new option. You can say dash dash data set and give a H5 path. And if we do that, we get just this data set. So this is useful if like, you're in a domain that has, you know, maybe hundreds of different groups and data sets, you can just pull out uh, the exact data set you're looking for. Um, and uh, it works um, uh, just like the uh, H5 dump option. And if I do something like, um, oh, so I'll just say that the dash V is for verbose. So if we do without dash V, we get just this. And with dash V, we see not just the name and the data set and its extent, uh, but also its uh, UUID, uh, the chunk shape, uh, is storage class and the type. So let me explain some of these. Okay, so every object in HSTS has a, a GUID, a UUID, uh, and this the GUID for this object. The chunk shape is uh, just like with HF5 library, uh, it's how the data set is, is divided into separate pieces. Um, here, the chunk shape is two million bytes each. And then here we have the number of um, chunks and, and how many chunks are allocated. So there are 30,000, oh, sorry, 301,358 chunks, uh, allocated chunks in this domain, in this data set. Uh, out of a possible total of uh, 301,358. And here it says there are linked chunks. So what linked chunks are is they are not actually existing as part of the HSCS domain, but instead they're basically pointers to chunks that exist in a different HDF5 file. And we'll, we'll see in detail how that works in a bit. Uh, the storage class is called H5D chunk ref indirect. And we'll explain that too. Uh, this number of logical bytes and the number of linked bytes. Okay, so logical bytes is um, the size of the data set uh, just in terms of the data space and the data type. So how, let's see if we can parse this. So it's, uh, that's the millions. So five, 59 billion logical bytes, some. And the link bytes are the size of the, um, of all these chunks that's referring to added up together. And uh, it's a little larger because there'll be some chunks that are along the boundaries of the data space and they extend over and those would count as part of the uh, linked bytes. So we have a total of like 100.57% utilization means we're actually using a little more space than you would strictly need judging by the data shape and data type. And finally, the type is unsigned in 16. So if you're dealing with uh, data sets this large, and the numerical range you need is, is uh, sufficient for a two byte unsigned integer, you'll save a lot of space uh, compared to say using a 32 bit integer. Okay, and then, so let me, let me go back here. There's a few other options. You can say dash dash group would give you the same thing for a group path okay but this wind speed is a data set not group so we get an error there 
And you can even do this. Let me see if this works. And, and this is a little bit funky, so you, I want to I'd be curious because I'm feedback. I do like this. If I do HSLS with the bucket, and I say nreal answer to be conus n answer to be underscore conus underscore twenty twenty to h five slash wind speed. This is like taking the h five path and gluing it to the end of the domain path. I think this should work. Oops. Okay. What was that? Huh. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to this uh, a little bit later. So I actually hadn't tried it with uh, non-default bucket names before. Let me go back to the before. Okay, anyway, so now let's um, do some actual Python code. So here in this cell, we're going to say uh, use the HCS true and do this path, where we're going to use h5id.file to open uh, the domain with the bucket. And later we'll come back and try this part where we're going to open use regular h5pi to open the s3 file. OK, so that worked. And we get the GUID back. And then we can do list f to see the contents of that domain. And then there's list with all the same data sets we saw before. So let's, uh, at random, let's get one of these data sets. And it's so to get the wind speed. And these are the dimensions again. Just for fun, I can print out all the attributes of the data set. Okay. So there's there's various things that the NREL people have set up, like PSM units is M over second. And which I don't know what it means, and the scale factor is 10. So all this information you would need to read the the uh, the NREL documentation to understand. So how large is this data set? So let's do this. If we multiply the dimensions and multiply it by the size of the data type, we get this, and that's about 58 gigabytes. So quite large uh, for a data set. And again, these are the chunks. 2,000 by 500. So given as a two byte data type, that's uh, two megabytes per chunk. And how many chunks are in the data set? Before we're looking at the number of chunks over the entire domain uh, for this one data set, it is just uh, 295, 620,000, 295,620 chunks. OK, so let's read some data. Um, so I'll get a random coordinate just by doing this rand int for x and y. So this is my coordinate. And let's read some data. OK, so in 600 milliseconds, uh, we got this NumPy array from reading a data set for this selection. And I can do something like uh, array min, array max, array mean, and see for this selection, the values range from 0 to 63, and the mean is 7.13. OK. So that took 600 milliseconds. Um, and just for to demonstrate, if I run the same cell again, it goes from 600 milliseconds to 33 milliseconds, and we get the same data. And this is because HCS will cache chunks that have recently been accessed. So rather than going to S3 to fetch this data again, uh, we'll fetch the chunk. 
it can just do that selection from the existing chunk. If we um, change X slightly, let's say um, move it forward by 2000. Let's see by a thousand. I think that was that's I'll still be in the same chunk, I believe. Let's try this. Yeah. So even though we have a different selection this time, because you are accessing the same chunk you had before, it's still in the chunk cache in the server, and we get this uh, better speed. If I instead a wholly different location and do this. Now we're back to our slower uh, uh, time to get that selection. And again, if we do it again, again, now it's faster. All right. Okay, so let's, uh, this was reading just a a few chunks, two to four chunks, because we're getting a small uh, area in both the rows and the columns. But if we do something like choose a random row, like maybe wonder what's in row 48,453, and get all, I was going to have originally all the uh, the rows of that, sorry, sorry, a random, column and get all the a, a random row and all the columns. Um, but it's a little slow for this talk. So let's use 500,000. And that's only just a thousand chunks to read. So we're going to do this random index and then uh, this number of columns for the data. And if we run that, so now we have to read a thousand chunks are um, two gigabytes of data from S3 to fetch this one array. And that took 10 seconds. And we then get ray min, ray max. I think uh, this time we'll see less effect of the caching because we've have to read two gigabytes of chunks, there may not be enough chunk cache in the server to keep all those chunks resident. So let's try it again. So it was 10 seconds. And it's still about 10 seconds. So there's some, um, operate, uh, some options you can set up in your server, if you have the memory, to make the chunk cache larger, which could be useful if your working set is a, a reasonable size. Okay, so, so far we've just dealt with the typical kind of uh, operations you do in either H5Pi or H5Pi-D. Uh, now let's explore a little bit under the covers and see how this is all set up with the uh, this chunk linkage and so on. So if I do dataset.id dot dcpl underscore json. So this is a um a method that's not available in h5pi, but is in h5pi D that gives you the JSON for the dataset creation property list. And out of that, we just want the uh, this layout and chunk table. Okay, so we get that JSON. For that JSON, we get the layout key. And from that layout key, uh, we get this chunk table. Actually, let me run this first. 
So, so this is the DCPL JSON. So it's this layout H5D chunk indirect. The file URI is a property that says what is the actual HDF5 file that we are pointing to. And in this case, it's this file in the bucket called nrel pds nr to b conus answer to be underscore conus underscore pv 2020 h5. Uh, the dimensions are the the chunk shape dimensions. This time for the HTF5 file we're talking to. And chunk table is used, it's a um, anonymous data set uh, in the HSDS domain that contains the offset and size of each chunk in um, this file for this data set. Okay, so when we are accessing a chunk from an HFI file, we need to know three things. We need to know which file we're talking to. We need to know the offset of that chunk within the file, and we need to know the size of the chunk. Now, since there are um, thousands of, of chunks for this particular data set, if we listed the offset and the size in the JSON for each of those, uh, it would be quite verbose and inefficient to access. So instead, what we do in this case is use this class called H5D chunk ref indirect. And uh, it's indirect because we get the chunk uh, offset and size from another data set. So there's two hops, right? So if you want to find some data, you first find the chunk. To find the chunk, you access this first data set that contains the offset and size of each chunk you're looking for. And with that information, you go to this file and pull out the chunk. It's the operator is called the S3 range get. So we read this S3 object, but not the entire object, just the uh, bytes for that chunk we're looking for. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So let's look at the chunk table uh, data set. So this, this is a GUID. Uh, for the HSTS data set. And it's actually an anonymous data set. An anonymous data set means that if you did the HSLS for the domain, it wouldn't show up. There's no link to the actual data set. But it has, does have a good, and you can access it. So how do you do it? Well. We get the chunk table ID from this uh, data set creation property list JSON. And then we say F bracket. And rather than an H5 path, we have this uh, string data sets slash and a chunk table ID. So we do that and we will magically get the chunk table. So there it is. So it's a uh, here, normally you'd have the H5 path, but again, it's anonymous. The shape is 53 by 5686, and the type is uh, bar V12, which basically means it's a compound type. So it contains two fields, uh, an integer offset uh, and the integer size. The offset is a eight byte unsigned integer because we don't know how large the file could be. Um, and the size is a four byte integer because uh, I think there's a limit of less than four gigabytes for the size of a given chunk. All right, um, let's do that. And then one chunk of chunks. So. The, okay, so now this gets a little weird. Okay, so the chunk table has its own chunk shape. And in this case, the chunk table chunk shape is 
53-5686, meaning that uh, this data set has exactly one chunk because the chunk table uh, chunk layout is the same as the chunk table data space. But if you had an even larger data set, you could have uh, uh, multiple chunks in the chunk table. Okay, so this is a little funny because now we have, you have the chunk shape of the chunk table, which points to chunks uh, with their own chunk shape in the um, data set. But anyway. Um, if you've seen the movie uh, Tenet, you might be better prepared for this. The, uh, let's see, so how big is this? Okay, so the chunk table is about uh, three megabyte or so. Okay, so we have three megabytes of information about the chunks in the data set that we're referring to. And if I look at a few of these entries, uh, be like this. So how to interpret this? So these are four elements here. Let's just do one. Okay, so this is one element of the chunk table, and it's a, uh, a list of two items. The first is the offset into that HDF5 file, this S3, blah, 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 CONUS underscore PV. And the second is the size, which is uh, 2 million. So you may think, why do I need to store the size of the chunk? Aren't they all the same? Uh, in this case, they actually are all the same. But if we had, uh, say, use compression, then each chunk would have a different size based upon how this particular data got compressed or not. OK, so what do we do, or what does the server do with this information? Well, when you have a selection, that selection will cover a set of chunks. For each of those chunks, it will read from the chunk table. And in this case, say, okay, this chunk is at this offset and has this many bytes. We'll do a S3 range get from that file, read the data, apply whatever decompression is needed. And uh, from that point on, it works just like um, it would for regular uh, data. Okay, so what's the advantage of this? Well, since these files are, are quite large, then if you, you could have the option to transcode all the data for these HFI files into uh, the HSDS native schema. But if we did that, it would take some time because you, you have terabytes of data to mine through. And also you would have to, not you, but NREL would have to pay for the storage costs for the additional 15 terabytes of data. So by using this, uh, this linking mechanism, then you can utilize existing HFI files without having to duplicate the data. Okay, the, uh, the only limitation to this is that it's uh, impossible in this case through HSDS to modify the data set data. So there's a data that is linked to HFI files is, is a read-only in effect, which is fine in this particular case because we, we, we don't want users to modify the data anyway. Um, all right, so that, that was a bit involved. Uh, any 
questions on how this all works out? Okay, I guess it's more clear than I thought. Um, let's go back. And uh, remember, I was going to follow this other path. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So let's say, what if we don't use HSGS? Okay, so now we'll do this, uh, use this mechanism called S3FS and say H5Pi, not H5PiD, but H5Pi.file. And we can open this S3 uh, URI. Okay, so now our file ID is a, a integer. Before it was a good. We can do the same kind of list operation. And here's something funny right away. You'll notice that whereas before we had 20 some data sets, here we only have five. Air temperature, meta, time index, wind direction, wind speed. So what happened to others? Well. They are actually different HDFI files. So the HSDS domain, this domain, has a collection of data sets that are linked to different HDFI files. Okay, so you can, in effect, um, kind of munge a more than one HDFI file uh, into a single. HSDS domain in this way. And that might be useful, right? So you, know, you could imagine for various reasons, the NREL administrators didn't want to deal with multi-terabyte files. Here they can break up their HFI files into smaller pieces, but then present a unified HSDS domain that's a collection of all these smaller pieces. And one thing, let me flip back to here one time. This, um, in this chunk layout, we actually have a file URI. You can actually have a different setup where you include a file URI as part of the chunk table. And so in that case, your chunk table would have a compound type with three fields. There'd be a string that is the file you're pointing to, the offset, and the size. And using that, you could have one data set that points to different chunks in different files. But in this case, since all the chunks in this data set point to the same HFI file, it uh, uses less space just to keep the file URI as part of the layout JSON and to store the offset and size in the chunk table. Okay, back to here. Okay, so wind speed is in this file, so we can do this again. And they get the same information as before. And you can list the attributes. And that works fine. And we get the same dimensions, the same chunk layout, and the same number of chunks. And we can do a, the same kind of two megabyte selection. So bear in mind, so now I'm using H5Pi and HF5 library, whereas before I was using H5PiD to HSDS, but we're getting all the same kind of results. And here, this took just a few milliseconds, and here it's a little slower to read uh, through the HF5 library because the HF5 library wasn't specifically designed to work with high latency data like S3. So it took uh, three seconds. Let's try it again, see if it's faster. Okay, 350 milliseconds, not bad. 
Okay. Now let's do the same index. Read the same number of chunks, thousand chunks, and do the same operation. So before this was taking um, like 10 seconds on HSDS. And if we do this, Let's see. I've actually forgot how long this is. It's quite a bit longer. Okay, let's let that go. Meanwhile, down here, let, let me let me try this um, um, this new HSLS feature. So if I do HSLS slash home slash test user one call at H five. We can see uh, the first two groups of this domain. And if I do dash R, here, let me make this bigger. I don't know why that doesn't resize. Maybe because it's going anyway. Um, sorry. So if I do say give a dash dash group okay. So now we'll see just this G two group elements slash data set two point one slash data set two point two. If I do HSLS dash R dash, a little funky here. Oh, good. So, so, uh, so this finally finished in about two minutes. So that was two minutes versus um, it was ten seconds, right? Um, for HSDS, and the difference is because in HSDS we can be reading these chunks in parallel, whereas the HSDS library has to read them sequentially, and then because S three is relatively high latency storage service, it just a time to read. A thousand chunks adds up to quite a bit. Okay, so now let's go back. Let me resize this. Yeah, see now I can make this larger. Um, so if I do dataset slash g two slash dataset two point one, I see that particular dataset. And if I did verbose, we see more information about it. And the one thing I was trying to do before was this rather funky thing if I do HSLS slash home slash test user one slash tall to H5 slash. G2 slash D set 2.1. Ah, so that, that works somehow. So you're saying with this HSLS slash home slash test user one slash tall to H5 slash G2 slash D set 2.1. You're, you're, you're in fact saying, give me the information about the path G2 slash D set 2.1 in the domain home test user one tall to h5 so so the question arises um where does the domain end and where does the h5 path start and uh how this works uh, is that it just tries each of these as a domain so it first looks for a domain that ending in days at 2.1 there's no requirement that uh, the main actually have a suffix 
with of that h5 of course uh and then it tries this thing with g2 and finally tries uh home test user one slash tall a5 so and it is a domain and then it uses the rest of the argument as the path so it's a little bit funky uh but maybe in a way it's, it's kind of natural because you see the hierarchy of your domain location just extending into the HF5 hierarchy of, of one domain. Or maybe not. Uh, you, feel free to let me know if you think this is a bad idea or, or not. But I thought it might be convenient. Um, anyway, so that's all I have. Um, any questions? John, I have I have one question. This is Robert. Um, hey, Robert. You mentioned the uh, limitation of H five pi using the underlying underlying H five lib uh, mm -hmm. when when reading S three. At this point, is that just architecturally fixed? Is that just a constraint that's that won't ever change, just based on the nature of of how S three works and how uh, the underlying H five library works? Or, or will that at some point get better? Um, well, you know, we, we've actually internally, we've talked about ways this could be speeded up and there are um, a, a few different approaches. So uh, Alexander uh, Jelinek has been working on a way that you can uh, restructure files to make it more efficient. Uh, there is a, a, another idea would be to not read them sequentially, but read them in parallel. So HSD, uh, sorry, S3 is actually uh, a very high throughput uh, storage service, but it's high latency. So when you need to read, say, a thousand chunks from S3, what you want to do is be able to read uh, multiple chunks in parallel. And S3 totally supports that, right? So you could be sending, you know, hundreds of simultaneous S3 requests to, to read at the same time. And S3 would be returning um, all the data pretty efficiently. The only trick is from the HF5 library, your code has to say, okay, I need this set of chunks, send these requests to S3 at once. And as the data comes back from S3, you know, do the right thing with those chunks, uh, which is not how the library code is currently set up. Currently it's saying, okay, I need to read these thousand chunks. Let's get chunk one, let's get chunk two, let's get chunk three. And so you can imagine in this kind of case, uh, the latency each time adds up, and then your total performance uh, suffers. I see. So okay. Hopefully, we can we can work on on these enhancements uh, to library and get uh, uh, better performance. In this case, I see. Okay, so so it really is. It's it falls in the category of doable, but yes. it's but mm -hmm. it's not trivial. Right. Okay. Uh, thanks. All right. Okay. Well, uh, thanks everyone for their time. I hope this was uh, uh, useful or at least entertaining. Um, we'll see you next time. Thanks, John. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye bye.